Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spirit, I need Steel, and welcome to Age of Engineering Super Shorts. Between this episode and last, I set up a farm with a worm, which speeds up crop growth and which you get when you're tilling grass or dirt, and a cow farm with four cows that I kill every 20 minutes. Why? Because leather dries into rotten flesh, smelts into bones. Those are early recipes of my peaceful pack. I also went mining and made an iron all-in-one tool. But what I really want to do this episode is get into the industrial age. For that I need a forge hammer, which needs treated sticks. Treated wood planks, which make sticks, need creosote oil, which of course I have been collecting. Note that this recipe can also use bottles of creosote oil. So let's make ourselves a forge hammer. Trophy number one. When I make a room for industrial craft two, I'm going to put this in there, but not right now. I have half the diamonds I need for a macerator and metal former together, so I'll go mining. I already went mining for copper, tin, and iron, so I don't have a problem on that right now. After a good while, I have finally found diamonds. It's not quite enough diamonds to do everything I want to do, so I'll skip the macerator for now. Before I make any IC2 machines, the first thing I need is a generator. Before I make a generator, though, I should probably make a room. Here's the finished product. I didn't want the room to be all white, so I used a lot of grays and blues. The floor is made of Celtic concrete, dent and circular prismarine in an alternating pattern, and light blue stable stone and blue lamps. Here's the wall. The beams are shipping crate silver blocks, the frames are Celtic marble, and the panels are made of dented andesite, light blue rim stable stone, and cyan lamps. Here's how it looks from outside. The roof is pretty much the same as the storage room, but with light blue stable stone and gray and light and clear glass. I've just expanded my farm slightly and got some more leather. Anyway, now that I have a machine room, let's do some machining. The forge hammer makes plates, but it requires two of a metal to make one plate. So for now, I'm going to make as few machines as possible until I can get a metal former. Good thing I have a river near my home. The crafting calculator lets me calculate recipe costs. I'll add a recipe, new group called IC2, and click on a generator to add it. If you're in the window, you can press R on a machine, and press move items. And you can pick which item from the OR dictionary you want. Every time you see a GUI like this, you're setting a default for future recipes that you can later change. Now I can press save. Now to use the labeling feature. To create a group of items you'd like to craft, click on the label, give it a name, press create, and add your items by clicking on an input slot and clicking on an item. I'll add a generator, compressor, and metal former. To use the label, I click on label and pick the label I want. Now you can see all my missing items. Let's start giving them recipes. If you press R on an item and shift click move items, you can add the recipe right away. You can add recipes from absolutely any mod. Because just enough calculation dynamically generates its own recipe adding procedure. Uh, the second time you open up Minecraft. Now I know how many plates I need, and in fact, how much metal I need too. While I wait, let's deal with rubber. Please don't ask me why the resin is in here. But if you're asking what that little cloud on the chest is, it happens when you press T on an item to find it. JI conveniently searches in all nearby inventories. It even does it between walls. Because who cares about immersion? If I want to grow these rubber tree saplings quickly, I want bone meal. So it's a good thing I saved up all this leather. Two drying racks that I'll just place up here. They'll turn leather into rotten flesh in 20 seconds. Remember, this is a peaceful pack recipe. It's not in the normal Age of Engineering mod pack, but it is approved. Rotten flesh smelts into bones. Again, peaceful pack. I'll place my rubber tree farm starting here. The fact that one bone meal grows a rubber tree is a vestige from 1.2.5. As you can see, I've isolated this resin spot. Now I have four of them. Rubber wood cannot normally be turned into planks. It can be extracted into rubber. Right click on a spot and watch rubber fly, using a tree tap. Until you have an extractor, sticky resin turns into rubber in a furnace. 47 iron plates, wire cutters, three tin plates, a tin wire, an insulated tin wire, tin item casings, and an RE battery. 18 gold plates, 18 copper plates, oops, another four chammer, five bronze plates, and 36 copper cables. Three basic machine casings, 12 insulated copper cables, two electronic circuits, and a generator, and a compressor. For now, I'll just place my generator and compressor here. I can move them later with a wrench. I'll throw a coal in to start making power, and start compressing these plates into dense plates. Two dense iron plates, and two dense gold plates. Two wood casings, two small storage crates, 10 bronze item casings, two toolboxes, which don't stack, three coils, and last but not least, a metal former. I'll place it here, for now. I also want to make an extractor. The metal former has multiple modes. It can make plates like this copper plate, or wires. One extractor. My plan is to run power back one and machines in the front. I have bad experiences tearing up underneath my base. I'm gonna store power with a bat box, three RE batteries, and a bat box. Bat boxes store energy when you break them, so in order to save energy from the generator without losing it, I'm gonna place the bat box on top. Meanwhile, I can wrench these machines by shift-right-clicking. If you break them straight up, you only get a machine block back. 
Behold, 12,798 EU spared from death. Here's a quick chest for everything I see too. And finally, the trophy. Just relocating this chest a little bit. Time to mine, with cobalt and a tool station, just in case. I'm having an awful lot of trouble finding diamonds. I've made three strip mines already. By the way, sorry about the temporary drop in audio quality. I have fans on, it's very hot. So I'm gonna try something new to mine. The EFLN, which explodes, but doesn't destroy blocks. I'm desperate, so I'm okay with losing the fortune that I put on this cobalt pickaxe just to get one diamond. But where do I get gunpowder? My normal peaceful pack recipes require crushed coal, but if you don't have access to Ender IO, or in fact any sort of masturbator, you can just smelt coal blocks to get gunpowder at a much lower efficiency. Cooking it up now, 18 gunpowder and 18 flint makes 18 EFLNs. Instead of going down my usual strip mining direction west, I'm gonna go east instead. Behold, more than a bit messy, but hey. Diamonds! Took long enough. Though, to be fair, I found them in a cave I got from the ELFN. Thank you for the 11 diamonds, fortune pickaxe. Another 11 diamonds. One diamond grinding head, and a macerator, finally. While I have this macerator running, I'm gonna set up a few more things. I'm gonna need a seared tank, and a seared furnace controller. Taking iron out of a furnace got me about 100 different achievements. This is a seared furnace. Each of these slots can smell 16 items at once, and it also smells food faster. Two generators, and two solar panels. A macerator uses two EU per tick, so two solar panels will power perfectly. I can fill it with metals, and just wait as the seared furnace fills up. And that's it for today's episode. Yes, I know I said I wanted steel, but I've been working on this episode for so long I figured I might as well get it out at some point. Don't worry, steel will come next episode, and probably calculator as well. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed!